It's a tough life being an NPC in a video game, but if you're lucky, you get to just wander around Los Santos being a hilarious satire of American culture. Los Santos is supposed to be magical, but everyone is in rehab. You can say that again. Haha, <laughs> take that, Los Angeles! If you're unlucky, however, you get placed in a spot that makes it all but guaranteed that every single player who passes through is going to make sure they murder you in as effective and messy a manner as possible. Maybe you're blocking an important route. Maybe you're stood next to a new weapon they want to test out. Or maybe you're stood precariously on a big precipice right when the protagonist learns how to do cliff kicks. Whatever it is, you're straight out of luck, just like these seven unlucky NPCs everyone always kills. Enjoy, and beware spoilers ahead for the following games. Legendary 1997 first-person shooter Goldeneye needs no introduction. What? I don't get paid by the word. The second level of the game, Facility, has you secretly infiltrating, holy sh**, a facility, having bungee jumped off the dam that looms above it in the level prior. But in order to get in, you have to do some proper spycraft. And by proper spycraft, I mean crawling around in the vents and sneaking in via the toilets. Jeez, at least give the guy time to shake. Except, let's be honest, there is an additional step in that process for just about everyone who ever played Goldeneye, and that is shooting the poor gentleman in the cubicle next door in the top of his head before dropping into the room. Or indeed, clearing out the bathroom and then wrenching open the unlocked cubicle door and gunning down the hapless goon. We're struggling to think of a less dignified way for a video game mook to go out than that. Still, at least he had his trousers up. Although that does raise a whole host of other questions. The worst part of all this is that it's totally unnecessary, because the guard in question will just stay there indefinitely if you don't bother him on agent or secret agent difficulty. It is worth pointing out though, that on double O agent difficulty, he will burst out of the cubicle and open fire. You know, I'd often wondered what made a double O agent a cut above a regular agent, and now I know getting surprised by people bursting out of toilets. You are about to enter a restricted area. The guard up ahead will try to arrest you if he spots you, so keep low and try to slip past unnoticed. This is four. We need to set up security at the wall entrance. Subdue or kill. The choice is yours. Usually in Hitman games, you're given total freedom to approach the mission however you want, so there's unlikely to be any one luckless NPC who gets more than their fair share of deadly visits from Agent 47. Well, except maybe Sapienza Mansion keycard owner Rocco. That's not always the case though. 2012's Hitman Absolution included a tutorial mission that showed you how to play the game that was a lot more linear than your typical Hitman mission, and as such, everyone who played it would have taken pretty much the same route, at least in the early stages. Keep using instinct until you are safely inside. That's why everyone who played it would have come across this guard leaning out of a window overlooking a sheer drop to the jagged rocks below, who was simultaneously experiencing both great luck and the worst luck it's possible to have. Great luck because he's just been given the cancer all clear from his doctor. What? You're kidding me. Wait, are you sure? It's not prostate cancer. <laughs> I could kiss you. I mean, that's great news. Oh man, you made my day. The worst luck because he's an NPC leaning out of a window in a Hitman game. This encounter is tailor-made for you to yank this poor guy to his death, even giving you multiple setup lines on which to do it for maximum comic effect, like this. I thought I was a goner. <laughs> Not that you'd know it from the way the game sets it up, but you absolutely don't have to kill this guy. If you wait a few moments, he'll wander away delighted, and you'll be free to carry on with the mission. But where's the fun in that? Especially when he's saying stuff like this. Woo! Man, no one can piss on this day. I mean, what else are you supposed to do? Seek for joy, 
Lord. No respect for art. Spare a thought for the poor, hard-working minstrels of Assassin's Creed. No, wait. Hear me out. Sure, okay, these musical non-player characters are as annoying as they are omnipresent in the streets of Renaissance Italy. And sure, they don't know any Carly Rae Jepsen. And sure, the way that these minstrels appear to pester you, a busy assassin trying to keep a low profile in preference to literally everyone else on the street, does suggest that they're some kind of covert agents in the pay of the assassin order, designed to test whether or not you are responsible enough to have a hidden blade. It turns out, you're not. <laughs> But I put it to you that as far as we can tell, these minstrels are just professional street musicians whose enthusiasm for sharing their art and terrible bad luck means that of all the people they could have chosen to entertain, they pick an irritable player character who can murder them with a single button press. A player with any degree of self-control will eventually condition themselves not to murder every minstrel in shanking range because it causes a game-halting desynchronization on account of how out of character it is for good guy Ezio to kill a civilian for getting on his nerves. You brought your own brother in for torture last week. What became of him, huh? But even so, Ezio can't disguise his contempt for these NPCs, even when disguised as one of them himself. I am a tagless minstrel, I sing off key for coins. If you spot me in the street, please kick me in the loins. It's hardly call me maybe, but it's something. You, yup. Oh, all right, so, so what's the plan? Eight targets one day, we're gonna need a couple more Colts in here if we're gonna wreck this island in a cold what? storm. No, listen, I can't stay long. How did you even get in here? Didn't you get shot two loops ago, or, or, or was it three? Show me Different the way. Look, there's huh? thousands of us, or more, I, I don't know, but none of us have gotten it right. Deathloop is a time-looping, paradox-hopping, mind-melting sci-fi story that is as confusing as it is mysterious. But all you really need to know is that you can kick people by clicking in the right stick. Now I understand time travel, because I booted that guy into next week. Because of confusing time loop reasons, every day repeats for every resident of the town of Updarm, meaning even if they die, they wake up again the next morning absolutely fine. That's why they're known as Eternalists, and that's why you can feel zero guilt whatsoever when you murder them in increasingly colourful and entertaining ways. See? He's loving it! Pretty sure he was loving it. It feels a lot like the game is encouraging you in this direction, when literally the first Updarm resident you come across in the very first loop of the game can be found standing on the edge of a sheer cliff, facing away from you, and throwing rocks into the abyss. It couldn't be more of a gift if they'd tied a bow around her. Which, having seen some of the fashion choices in Updarm, wouldn't actually be that out there. So yes, I think you can safely say that the game expects, nay, wants you to treat yourself and hoof this lady off the cliff. Best of all, because of the time loop, this is the gift that keeps on giving. Because every time you spend the morning in Updarm, this particular Eternalist will have willingly returned to that exact same spot, just waiting to be launched off the cliff again. <laughs> Definitely, 100%, without a shadow of a doubt, loving it. Thus began the Age of Fire. But soon the flames will fade, and only Dark will remain. Dark Souls is a game that's mostly about other things killing you, so it makes a nice change to be the one doing the killing for once. 
Or at least that's the justification I'm using for the violence dished out against a couple of hapless NPCs by me and, I have to assume, every single other person who played Dark Souls. The NPCs in question appear right at the start of the game as you're making your way out of a cell in the Northern Undead Asylum. You're not the only inmate here as you discover when you encounter a Hollow who you can tell is going through some tough times because he's holding his head in his hands. Oh, and also because he's imprisoned in the Undead Asylum. Most players will, of course, take this as an invitation to beat this guy's head in, but even if you manage to avoid that siren lure, further down the corridor, you'll encounter another Hollow bashing his head against the wall next to a helpful note from the game's developers reminding you how to do a strong attack. I mean, be rude not to, right? Congratulations, you just killed the only two things in Dark Souls that aren't trying to kill you. Good luck in the rest of the game. You'll never guess who's awake. You sh me. Come see for yourself. How long has it been? Years. In Saints Row 2, you wake up in a prison hospital after a terrible accident. And that terrible accident was Saints Row 1. Julius called and said you might be stopping by. Look, you looking for a little something, something? Because if so, I can let Peggy over there give you a ride. Not a good game. Narratively though, the reason you're stuck in traction is that there was a boat explosion at the end of Saints Row 1 and you've achieved the misfortune double whammy of being both imprisoned and hospitalised. You got anything you want to say to the judge, you better start thinking of it now. You're wasting your time. What was in that boat? A shipment of mirrors and flat cats? It's not all bad news though, thanks to the care of the diligent team of medical professionals at Stillwater Correctional Facility, you recover from your grievous injuries and awake from your coma. How's the patient? Seeing as they're still breathing after being caught in a massive explosion, I'd say pretty good. Dang, that's some really excellent medical care. I wonder how you'll show your gratitude. Maybe a bunch of flowers or a, you know, box of chocolates. That question is answered by the very first objective in the whole game, which is to kill one of the very doctors who has been looking after you. This objective is totally random, totally unnecessary, and most importantly of all, totally mandatory. You're getting more than you bargained for. Who else wants a piece, eh? Literally everyone who wants to progress beyond this first scene in the game will have to kill this non-hostile Doctor NPC, even though that's absolutely the worst thing you'll do in the entire game. Alright, maybe a very close second. This is Little Lamplight. We live here and we don't need no mungos messing it up. So just take a hike. Why would I tell you anything? God, you're dumb. Hell no! No mungos allowed! Sooner or later in Fallout 3, you're going to come across a town called Little Lamplight, which is populated and run entirely by children. This might sound like the worst idea for a settlement until you realise the nearby town of Megaton is built around a giant unexploded atom bomb. That is the worst bit of town planning since that roundabout that's actually six roundabouts in Hemel Hempstead. The problem with a town populated by kids is that once you get to the age of 18, you become a mungo, which is what they call grown-ups, and at that point you get unceremoniously kicked out into the wasteland to fend for yourself. It's time to go. You know the rules. The rules are stupid. You're a mungo now, you gotta leave. Maybe I can stay just a little longer? Bye, Sticky. Yeah. Bye, Sticky. So when non-player character Sticky reaches his fateful 18th birthday, it seems like the nice thing to do would be to offer to escort him to safety in Big Town. I'm not allowed in Little Lamplight anymore. Only people under 18 get to live in Little Lamplight. So when you're done with those little kids, we can go to Big Town together. I'll wait outside for you. What you don't know at this point is that Sticky is a character who has been laser targeted to be as annoying as possible, and every banal story he tells on the way to Big Town is a masterclass in irritation. Once upon a time, there was this dog. His name was Holy Toledo, and he was really powerful. And one day, a giant ant came up to him and started talking like he wasn't some dumb ant, but a person of some kind. It said, prepare to die. I'll be prepared to die if I have to listen to any more of these stories. 
as you rack up the miles of walking, you can try and plead with him to shut his yap, but that goes predictably badly. You stop talking. No, you shut it. La 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 la. You shut up. And when Sticky's not chattering incessantly about inane nonsense, he's whistling tunelessly. That's not a subjective opinion from me, it's literally what the subtitle says. Look, we're living in a blasted radioactive wasteland, riddled with mutated monsters and where the definition of a good meal is one that doesn't cause all your teeth and hair to fall out. Can we not whistle? Ultimately, Bethesda has successfully created one of the most murderable NPCs in all of video game history. Are we there yet? At first, you might hesitate to pull the trigger because in theory, Sticky's just a kid. But then you'll hear another powerfully irritating line of dialogue being delivered in the voice of what is clearly a grown ass man and the only course of action becomes clear. And was our so-called hero scared? You bet he was. He cried like a little baby. Wah, wah, wah. And all his friends laughed at him. Ew. Well, he's definitely sticky now. Toilet guy, I found his weakness. It is shooting him in the toilet. Do you remember toilet guy? He was point one. Back then you may have forgotten, and now this just seems strange. But sorry, that was an earworm I've had. Anyway, please watch some more videos if you enjoyed this one. If you want something along the same lines, here's a video about NPCs whose lives were ruined by video game protagonists. Or if you want something else entirely, then why not check out this video from Outside Extra? See what those folks are doing over there, what they're up to. What are they up to? Who knows? Toilet guy, I found his weakness!